E.D. Lamar, born Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler, was an Austrian-born American actress, inventor, and film producer. She appeared in 30 films over a 28-year career in Europe and the United States, and co-invented an early version of frequency hopping spread spectrum communication, originally intended for torpedo guidance. Lamar was born in Vienna, Austria-Hungary, and acted in a number of Austrian, German, and Czech films in her brief early film career, including The Controversial Ecstasy, 1933. In 1937, she fled from her husband, a wealthy Austrian ammunition manufacturer, secretly moving to Paris and then on to London. There, she met Louis B. Mayer, head of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM, studio, who offered her a Hollywood movie contract, where he began promoting her as the world's most beautiful woman. She became a star through her performance in Algiers, 1938, her first American film. She starred opposite Clark Gable in Boomtown and Comrade X, both 1940, and James Stewart in Come Live With Me and Ziegfeld Girl, both 1941. Her other MGM films include Lady of the Tropics, 1939, H.M. Pullum, ESQ, 1941, as well as Crossroads and White Cargo, both 1942, she was also borrowed by Warner Brothers for The Conspirators, and by RKO for Experiment Perilous, both 1944. Dismayed by being typecast, Lamar co-founded a new production studio and starred in its films, The Strange Woman, 1946, and Dishonored Lady, 1947. Probably her best-known role was playing Delilah in Cecil B. DeMille's Samson and Delilah, 1949. She also acted on television, before the release of her final film, The Female Animal, 1958. She was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960. In early 1933, at age 18, Hedy Kiesler, still working under her maiden name, was given the lead in Gustav Makati's film Ecstasy, Ecstase in German, Ecstase in Czech. She played the neglected young wife of an indifferent older man. The film became both celebrated and notorious for showing the actress's face in the throes of an orgasm. According to Marie Benedict's book The Only Woman in the Room, Kiesler's expression resulted from someone sticking her with a pin. She was also shown in close-ups and brief nude scenes, the latter reportedly a result of the actress being duped by the director and producer, who used high-power telephoto lenses. Although Kiesler was dismayed and now disillusioned about taking other roles, Ecstasy gained world recognition after winning an award in Rome. Throughout Europe, the film was regarded as an artistic work. However, in the United States, it was banned, considered overly sexual, and made the target of negative publicity, especially among women's groups. The film was also banned in Nazi Germany, justified by Kiesler's Jewish heritage. It was not until 1935, after cuts made by the Nazis, that the film was shown under turmoil in a few German cinemas, with the warning, this film offends the youth. Her husband, Fritz Mandel, reportedly spent over $300,000 buying up and destroying copies of the film. At the beginning of World War II, Lamar and composer George Antheil developed a radio guidance system using frequency hopping spread spectrum technology for Allied torpedoes, intended to defeat the threat of jamming by the Axis powers. She also helped improve aircraft aerodynamics for Howard Hughes while they dated during the war. Although the US Navy did not adopt Lamar and Anfield's invention until 1957, various spread spectrum techniques are incorporated into Bluetooth technology and are similar to methods used in legacy versions of Wi-Fi. Lamar learned that radio-controlled torpedoes, an emerging technology in naval war, could easily be jammed and set off course. She thought of creating a frequency hopping signal that could not be tracked or jammed. She conceived an idea and contacted her friend, composer and pianist George Antheil, to help her implement it. Together they developed a device for doing that, when he succeeded by synchronizing a miniaturized player piano mechanism with radio signals. He D. Lamar. November 9, 1914 to January 19, 2000.